about true immortality, in other words, uh, living forever and ever until the end of time. I'm talking about a specific term, which is the reduction of the rate of mortality as a function of age. In other words, as we age, the rate of mortality increases. That's due to aging, uh, we get chronic degenerative diseases and mortality increases. The aim of my research is to reduce this rate of mortality, therefore we will be able to age without dying. And some people want to call it indefinite lifespans. We, we are born now and we have a definite amount of time to live 80 years, 100, 120 if we are lucky, and that's it, finish. But I would like to change that and see if there is a, a way to um, take away that uh, limit and just live indefinitely, open-ended, maybe 20 years, maybe 500 years, there is no end. And it is the elimination of involuntary death caused by aging, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm going to say that this is going to happen as an inevitable consequence of evolution. I'll take it step by step and you'll see that it is the only logical conclusion. You can see from this graph the existing lifespans, which uh, can reach up to, say, the age of 100. But my aim is to push it to um, up to 2,000. Uh, the reason I'm saying 2,000 and not 10,000 or 50,000 or whatever is that we are still going to die from other reasons apart from aging. We are going to die from illnesses, cancer, accidents suicide, uh, war and so on. So statistically, even if we eliminate aging, people would, uh, would be able to live for, say, to an age of 1,700 to 2,000 years. Um, and then they would die from uh, other causes of, of uh, death, as, as I mentioned. Now, we all know that nature works in a way that increases complexity. We started as a simple, simple um, chemical elements. We got together carbon, uh, oxygen, uh, nitrogen got together and they form molecules. The molecules eventually form cells. Cells form higher intelligence, higher complexity. And with time, we evolve and evolve to reach higher, progressively higher levels of, um, of variability and complexity. With each step, there is emergence. In other words, every time the, there is a system, the, com the components of that system give rise to higher properties and higher characteristics and functions that cannot be deducted back to the individual components of that system. I don't know if you understand what, uh, what I'm trying to say, but basically our components, in other words, uh, 10 trillion cells that we have, is not, um, our activity and function doesn't go back to the sum of all of these individual cells. It's something over and above. There is some new properties that are over and above the, our components. And uh, you can see how the universe is um, uh, progressing. We started with the back basic laws of the universe, which gave origi uh, the origin of life. Through evolution by natural selection, we now reach the highest, uh, most sophisticated level that ever existed, the human brain. And we are the homo sapiens sapiens. And so, twice because we are so clever that we are clever twice and um, we are moving into the transhumanist uh, domain now and the time scales for each particular step you can see here and think of the time scales every step the time necessary to achieve the next step is reduced by a factor of about 100 so it's um, a logarithmic reduction Life started in the orders of billions of years ago. Organisms 
uh, in millions, human brain in thousands, and then societies after humans got together from societies, and now we are moving to global integration. So our brain and uh, function is becoming global. Now, how can then, if nature says that we have to evolve and become more complex and we have to evolve in a quick period of time, not in a matter of millions of years, but in a matter of decades, how does then death fit within this uh, scenario? I, I can't understand how evolution by natural selection will, con we will continue because it wouldn't be necessary. We would develop through technology which will enhance our human ability and human biology. We will achieve higher complexity through this technology and this would be done so quickly that um, Darwinism, evolution by natural selection, will be discarded by nature. Nature doesn't care whether uh, natural selection is good or bad, or whether we are alive or we are dead. Natural, nature works just for some reason to increase complexity, make things more complex. So, if evolution by natural selection is not useful anymore, it's going to be discarded. And the good news, if this happens, is that aging will um, become redundant as well. Because the reason we age and die is because we are tied in to this um, natural selection thing. Our DNA has to evolve, has to uh, be mixed with other people's DNA, see if it can create something better out of it. And in the process of this, there aren't enough resources to keep the body going as well. There are only enough resources to keep the DNA going. So our body uh, hasn't got the resources to repair itself and dies. So this is a disposable soma theory. Our body becomes disposable like a container that carries the DNA. The DNA leaves, we die, and um, evolution becomes possible. But if if we are going to attain higher level of complexity in a very short time, then this scenario is not relevant any longer. Therefore, if um, Darwinism is going to be eliminated, therefore we are going to live in uh, um, so long so that our own brain, enhanced by technology, not our children's brain or our future, uh, the future um, people who are yet to be born, our own brain is going to survive for centuries or for an in, uh, definite time of, uh, period of time so that to evolve. Um, just to mention briefly the meta system. The meta system is essentially uh, what I was, uh, the example I was saying about the DNA, and then the neuron, uh, and then the brain and then society, and then global integration. Every time there is a transition from uh, these stages, there is a higher level of complexity. And you can see here a simplified uh, diagram. DNA affects the neuron, that affects the brain, that affects society, that affects global integration. But the trick is that with each step, there is a reciprocal causation. Each step affects the previous step as well. So, if society says it affects also, it affects the brain, it affects us. The way society evolves, it affects our brain. And our brain, as I will mention in a few minutes, affects our DNA. So, it goes backwards and forwards. These 